hey guys what's going on welcome back to the channel um, so we're gonna do another live and tonight we're gonna try to carve a little bit so I've uh, tried this a few times in practice and uh, once my computer crashed so hopefully we won't get any of that and uh, you know we'll be able to get through this with some, with some carving um, so yeah thanks for joining thanks for jumping in on the channel um, hope we can make this kind of a regular thing and get everybody involved in doing some carving with me. Um, so today I decided I was going to start working on my horse and I showed you guys in the last video, my horse. Um, but, um, here he is and, uh, see if I can get him in the camera. We're going to start working on him and hopefully in my lives I can get him all done, get him carved up because, uh, if I don't get started on him, I'm not gonna not gonna have him done here. And uh, I told you in the last in the last live, I got a little cowboy princess I got a carved by Christmas. So <laughs> I got to get started on my horse and get him done, get my sheriff finished up. So um, you know that way, uh, you know I can uh, put my scene together. So um, I got this horse from Lynn Dowdy. Lynn Dowdy, he does the uh, Wild West carvings, character carvings, and um, I used his pattern, but I'm actually going to do some different things than what he did, um, but I, I want to show you what the target is here. Um, I've got four different ones, now I don't know which ones Lynn has done, um, I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, this one here in the middle is his because that looks like one of the scenes that he created and i think i've seen that on his website um but here's you know three other versions of the horse that i'm doing and you'll notice this one he's got one leg up on the outside and on this one he's got a leg up in the back side on the other side there um but um this one here is not painted, so I'll probably I'm probably gonna do some different some different painting than what uh, you know what Lynn's done and what everybody else has done. I don't know. I haven't really thought about my paint scheme. And then I'm gonna have some different things on him too, since he's gonna be a sheriff. Um, but I kind of like the little band aid patch on the back of that one horse's butt. I don't know if I'll do that, but you know I got some other ideas that I'll I'll bring out as as we get moving forward. Um, if you haven't watched Lynn's videos on this horse, go check out his video on the horse. And um, you can watch my video. You can watch his video. But I give him all the credits for the pattern and the carving because I watched him. And uh, I haven't carved one yet. But um, I watched all the videos. So I'm pretty confident we can get it done. I can get it done. Um, so, yeah, we're going to try to work on him today a little bit and uh, carve on him and I don't know if I'll get, I was hoping to get the legs and hooves all done tonight, but I don't know if I will or not. Um, you know, we'll see. Um, if not, I'll finish it up in, in my off time, cam, off camera time, and um, we'll move on. But it's pretty simple. Um, the thing that about it is, and let me get back to, to the, the other camera. Um, the thing about it is with this, with this horse, he, um, teaches you to put it in two pieces and um it's kind of cool the way he does it um he's got these little pegs i don't know if it's getting blown out by the light or not i can't tell um let me hold it up to, to this camera over here but or this side over here where the lighting might be a little better but he puts two little pegs in there where you can put this horse together and glue him together. So for one, I bought some basswood off of Heineke and I got me some, uh, well, they call it one inch, but it's only seven eighths. And, um, when I, 
um, put it all together and, and set my wood down before I cut out my pieces, it warped like crazy. It was all curled up in the air, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm, what am I going to do with it now? So I put some weight on it and let it sit for a while, and it kind of flattened back out. It's still got a little bit of a a little bit of a curve to it, but I don't think it's going to cause much problems because I'm going to glue it all back together anyway with clamps. So it, it'll be fine, and you won't be able to see the seams once it's all carved and painted and everything. So, um, yeah, I'm going to carve for, you know, probably to around – an hour, you know, about an hour, 50 minutes or whatever um, is probably about all I'll be able to, to do on camera and everything. But we'll get him done. Um, so the, the reason why we do it in two, why he teaches you to do it in two pieces is one, the main thing is, is so you can do the legs easier and make them round. Um, get, get, it's just easier to work on the legs because when you, when it's all glued together, the legs literally touch each other. So these are two pieces of seven eighths basswood, um, that is cut out to the pattern. And I put the pegs and everything on there first and then put the pattern on and then, and then cut him out on the bandsaw just so I could get started. Um, there we go. Let's see, that's a little better view, I think. I'm looking at the monitor to make sure we're not blowing out. My my light up there is a little hard. It's turning a certain way. It kind of blows out. Um, but so a punta. Thanks for stop, stopping in, stopping in and checking us out. Um, so I'm not probably going to be able to comment too much with the chats because uh, you know it's a. Uh, it's going to be a little tough to carve and watch the chats and stuff, but I'll look up occasionally. But anyway, we we put this together with the pegs, got it all cut out. And when you cut the legs off, you got to pay real close attention that you cut the correct leg off. Um, so you cut one, you actually cut two legs off. You'll have, when you get done cutting it out, you're going to have two legs extra. So you're going to cut those legs out. And, and the cool thing about cutting them out is that you can go ahead and practice your first hoof. Um, so you can see, I'm hold it so you can see a little better. Maybe if I get a little closer to the camera. Um, but let me know. Let me know if, uh, you know, if it's what, what it's looking like. It's kind of hard for me to tell. But it looks like to me it's kind of washed out looking. Um, so I'm, this is a kind of a test for me, so I'm making sure that I can carve and everybody can see it and follow along. Um, so just let me know how it looks in the chat if you would. Um, but you get two extra legs, so it gives you a good practice to um, to do the hooves and do the horseshoe. And um, I still got one leg because I didn't, I didn't carve both practice legs. I just carved the one. I wanted the one that's going to stand up. That was the one because you really only have to carve the bottom of the hoof and the shoe on one hoof because it's the only one that's that you can actually see the bottom. The other three hooves, you know, they sit flat on the table. Um, so, you know, you can see if you, you can see that. But they sit flat on the table and um, that way you can uh, only see one hoof. Um, so, you know. We're going to carve on him a little bit and basically round the legs off tonight. And um, hopefully you'll stick by and follow through with me and we'll finish him all up and we'll put some cool stuff on him and everything. So, again, thanks for dropping in and um, hope you stick by us. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe um, and give us a like. And comments are definitely, I, I like to reply to comments. So, you know, if you if you comment, um, that, that helps me out too. Um, I did already start carving on some of the, um, on some of the hooves just, to, just when I was practicing and I wanted to speed things up a little bit. Um, but pretty much I'm going to go by the pencil lines. And like I always teach in the videos or show in the videos is I always want to just kind of carve up to my lines always just leave your lines on there when you're carving and then that way or when you're cutting it out on the bandsaw then that way you can uh, have the lines to go by and that's really where the lines are when you leave a little bit of space that's really how you start rounding them 
So, you know, that gives you a rounding point to start taking off, um, you know, taking off some wood and, and not going in. But the cool thing about caricatures is, is I can have, he can have skinny little legs and big hooves, or he can have little hooves and kind of chunky legs. It's just, that's the beauty of caricature that it's not perfect and Nate, just like in, you know, perfect in nature. So it's, uh, you know, it's kind of. It's kind of fun doing caricatures, um, just because even if you mess up, it kind of makes it look like it belonged there if you do everything right. But we're just going to round these off a little bit, starting right here at the at the mid part of the leg. And um, like I said, I don't know if I'll get both all four legs done tonight, but by next Monday we'll we'll have them all carved down and looking good, and we'll be ready to move on. But it's pretty simple if you're if you want to do one of these um the pattern was kind of hard to find it took me a while to find the pattern but i did find it on pinterest eventually um i know he says in the video that he put it up on his blog but i i just for some reason couldn't find it on his blog but i did find it on pinterest so if you uh if you can't find the 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 pattern just put a comment in there and and i'm sure he won't care if i post up a link to the pattern um since i don't know if he posted it on on uh pinterest or not but um some people think that it's not a, you know some people don't like the idea of of carving other people's patterns but i think it's a great way to learn hey Lindsay, i think it's a great way to learn especially when you're a beginning carver is to uh carve patterns and use other people's stuff i mean it's not like you know most most carvers they don't care as long as you give them credit for their patterns and i always if i use somebody's pattern i always try to give them credit for their patterns um if i was going to do something like a video and if i can find out who the owner of the patterns are you know, sometimes on Pinterest, they're just out there floating around and other people have, have uh, posted them up. So you don't know if that's the original owner of the pattern or not. Um, and then if I find a pattern that belongs to somebody else, I instead of me copying it and putting it on my website, I usually just put a link in the description so that way you can... Uh, at least find the pattern um, but I, I don't I don't mind doing other people's patterns I think it just makes you a better carver especially if you're you know have it in your mind that you're gonna change things around and most of the time when you when people carve stuff from somebody's patterns they usually change them around anyway put their own little twist on them you know What hand carving kit do I recommend? Well, I think that, uh, you know, for first knives, flex cut is a good, is a good knife to start with. And, um, they have a little whittler's kit, um, that has three knives in it. Um, let me see. This knife, and you guys see me use this knife a lot in my videos. This is one of my favorite knives, this flex cut knife. Um, you know, so I recommend starting out with flex cut. For well, one, they're the, they're the easy, probably the easiest knife to get, and and um, once you strop them up a little bit, um, they're they're really good tools. But the kit, there's two kits. One's just got two knives in it, and then there's a kit that has three knives in it. So there's a little detail knife. There's this knife, and I believe there's a bigger knife. Um, that's more for roughing out in the, you know, beginning rough out work. So that's what I would recommend. Um, it's kind of hard to recommend a knife. You really just got to kind of get you, get you a knife and, and start learning. I don't recommend a pocket knife. That's what I started with. Um, although people, people do carve with pocket knives, um, 
the only thing that I don't like about the pocket knife is that it can collapse on your fingers. And once you get hogging away on a good old hard piece of wood, most of the time, you know, before you know it, it's going to collapse on your fingers. That was the first knife I used. I used one of my grandpa's old pocket knives just trying, trying to see if I was going to like this stuff. But um, if you have like a woodcraft store, or I mean, you can definitely find it on Amazon. One of my videos, I posted the link to the, to the Whittler's kit. I don't remember. It was probably one of the beginning first videos I did. Um, but I can post that again. and It's no big deal. Um, but I would suggest... I would suggest start off with a flex cut knife. Um, but other people... You know, some people don't like them. But... I mean, I think... Really, you're going to find... That... Uh, as you start carving... I mean... If you go to carving shows and stuff like that, you see knives, people selling knives, and and you want to get one just because you see it and you're like, oh, I like it. Um, the ones I like is the lion's knives. I really like these lion's knives. Um, I got three of them. I had one. This was the first lion's knife I got. I I just like the way they I just like the way they cut. I like the profile of the blade. Hello from California, huh? Or Canada. Is that what CA is, Canada? Um, but I like the Lion's Knives. Um, but I think they're a little hard to find. Um, I don't know. I haven't really looked around. I got two of them from my instructor um, for doing some work on his computer. He gave me a couple because I was telling him how much I like them. And he was like, yeah, get in there and pick you one out. And I was like, oh, I can't do that. But you'll find that most carvers um, have a bunch of knives. They're always trying knives, trying new knives. Which there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you got to try different size handles. Uh, you know, it just depends on, on your hand size and everything. If you have a... A small hand you might be more comfortable with something with a smaller handle like this um, the flex cut knives are really nice because they're thick Santa Barbara California okay okay um, but you might like a thicker knife just for the grip and everything but really it's just something if you're starting out these flex cut knives are, are good to start with and that was what that's what I would recommend to everybody. They're not that expensive. I think there's I think the set was like I want this about forty eight bucks or something, but you get three knives in it. Um they're normally about twenty two, twenty five bucks a piece on Amazon. Um but you know, you just you just find you a knife keep it sharp and that way you'll have the best the best of luck and you'll enjoy you'll enjoy it and you'll you, like I said you will try other things you'll try other knives as you get into it you're going to be like oh I need a new knife I want to try that knife So I don't want to go too far up the back side of the of the butt there because um, I don't want to have a great big old gap in the back right here. So um, let's see if I can adjust where the lighting's a little better. My, my my light might be a little strong. Yeah, flex cut is good for getting started. Cause everybody see okay? This looks like to me like it's washed out. Can you tell me in the comments if it looks like it's a little washed out? Yeah, it will be on. It'll be on YouTube later, um, and I just started, so you know. Um. So. You, But 
but I do save them to YouTube because I know I have some people outside the country um, that don't that aren't on the same time frame as us, so it makes it kind of hard. I got people, you know, like I'm um, out in California. You're probably what three and a half to four hours difference from me, so it's eight o'clock here, so it's probably four o'clock there. So I know some people probably ain't home from work yet out the west coast so it, it's just hard to get a good time you know but fortunately youtube does it gets recorded and it gets uploaded um but if you just joined in we're working on this sheriff's horse this is going to be my sheriff's horse to go along with my sheriff um that i'm carving and i've had this thing sitting around for probably about three or four months and I keep looking at it and I wanted to do a live on try some carving on a live just to see how everything looks and how it works and how it goes um, and hopefully you know you guys can start joining in I'm trying to figure out learn how I can Bring in some carvers with me on there at the same time. Because I know Jeffro Carves is is a good channel. And me and him kind of started our channels kind of at the same time. And we've been communicating. And um, I think it would be cool to be able to maybe get him online. Because he's he don't live close to me, but he's close. Um, so... Um, it'd be cool if, if we could maybe do a collab carving together. He's a really, he, he does some really fun stuff too. Um, so if you haven't checked him out, Jeffro Carves, um, he's got a good channel. But I really kind of just started this youtube channel kind of document my carvings and do some fun stuff online and actually meet some people um so right now our uh carving clubs one of them ain't even meeting yet um and the other one's meeting with but they have a bunch of guidelines that and um i'm just taking some time Till this whole corona thing's over and done with. And then I'll be back in there, but. So I'm just using push cuts. And I'm just kind of not getting too crazy, taking too much off. Just starting my rounding. Um, cutting down to my lines and I'll do some shaping. Basically, I'm just roughing everything in. Once I get everything roughed in and get close to close to finishing up, I like to put the details in kind of last. Rough everything in. Um... As far as the pattern, like I was saying, maybe you missed it. Um, it it's Lynn Dowdy. It's his pattern. Um, I found it on Pinterest. I could not find it where he said it was. Um, because I think it got unloaded from his website. Um, but I give him all the credit. But I think he wouldn't mind if I put the pattern up. Um, or I'll put a link to it on Pinterest. I mean, if you guys ain't looking on Pinterest... For carving patterns and things you need to go to Pinterest and look around because there's a ton of wood carving patterns and stuff for beginners um, but if not if I can't find it back on Pinterest um, I will put it up I'll put it in the description after this video is over um, I have it saved to my hard drive I have it on computer because I wanted to resize mine a little bit um, so I do have it as a PDF file. 
um, because it's got all the other elements like the tail and the stirrups and um, I think I'm going to carve and it's got let's see there's a little rolling roll blanket on the back I think I'm going to carve a um, probably have a long gun on, on him in a sheath just um, and then I probably have to was thinking about putting some other things relating to the sheriff on there um, just some little details and stuff but the pattern please give us the link for the pattern um, yeah I will I will um, it's it looks like it's I mean it looks fun to me and I've wanted to do a horse to go along with my cowboy um, especially and I had a I had a uh, a rough out that I showed in the last video if you haven't seen that last live stream you can go back there and see that but um, I have a cowboy from rough out from GMB Sears it's called the rambling man I think is what the name of it was but I um I wanted to carve a horse and I watched Lynn's videos I like his his wild west his old west stuff and my wife is a big fan of wild west and she always wants to steal all my cowboys as soon as I get them done she's like I get that that's mine and we really like the the wild west theme There's a link in the um, in the description for Lynn Dowdy's site, and you can go on there. And his first video shows you how to do all this: put the pegs in it, make into two pieces, and and how to get it all lined up and everything. It wasn't really that hard, but um, I'm not gonna copy everything he did. That's his videos. Um, but you can go in there and, and check out his videos. And um, he'll show you how to get the pattern. Like I said, I'm doing my horse a little different than his. So it'll probably have some different features. But like I said, that's what you do when you use in other people's patterns. You just add your little bit of add your little bit of work to it. And what make it your carving and if you came in late you can go back and see I put some pictures up at the beginning of the video of what some of the other ones look for but if you go to Pinterest and search for caricature horse you should be able to find it um, that and painted examples that some other people have done So we're kind of just roughing his legs in here a little bit. Getting him roughed in. Basically just rounding them. I'll probably take more off once I get start getting things together. But the reason we do it in two pieces, like I said in the beginning, is that you can get around the legs easier. You can see if this thing was glued together, these legs would be touching each other. So it's kind of hard to get in there and get this part in here. Uh, I mean, it can be done. It can be done. You can put this thing, whole thing as one piece. Um, like I said, I think I, my piece was seven eighths thick, and I glued two. I was I'm going to glue two pieces together. But pretty much all I did was put a little peg. And some peg lines in there. Glued them little dowels pegs in there. So I can snap it together. So once I get the legs all done. I'm going to put this thing together. Put some wood, good wood glue on it. Clamp it all up. And by the time I carve it. You won't be able to see. Um, you won't be able to paint. Carving paint. You won't even be able to see the seam. Um, 
but if you can see that in the video we're, we're starting to get a little a little separation in the legs so by the time i carve on the other leg and start carving up a little bit more we'll start having that separation so he don't look like he's standing with his legs together and like i said it gives you it makes it a little easier to get around on the insides so Now, Lynn, when he carves, when we were talking about knives earlier, Lynn, he uses a, like a, a drywall type knife, a utility knife. Um, and that's what he likes to carve with. And that's kind of what, when I started watching him, I was like, wow, he carving with a utility knife. And um, he likes it because that's what he's used to. So. You know, it just depends on what you get used to. He also, if you watch, he'll teach you a lot about the anatomy of the horse. So, um, he'll go into a lot more detail than what I'm going to in this video. Because uh, I'm not really here to teach you how to carve it. I'm just teaching you, um, you know, what you can do with somebody else's pattern and make it look a little different make it look like your own thing I used a bandsaw on this I used a bandsaw um, but you could use a scroll saw because the wood I used was only uh, 7 8 7 8 so two pieces 7 8 I think what most scroll saws can cut like up to three inches maybe or a little under three inches so by the time you put these two pieces together because you have to put them together you if you're doing the two pieces method you have to put them together first um, with the pegs before you cut them out so you find your draw out lines put your pegs on there and it comes out to be an inch and three quarters is what my thickness is um, so, if it, most wood that comes, if you order just flat sheets of it, it's going to be 7 eighths. Um, so, when I ordered from Heineke, I told him I wanted a 1 inch, 2 1 inch pieces. And he told me that uh, it, it, if, he want, if I wanted 1 inch thickness, he would have to charge me more. Because it was a special cut. Um, so, I was like, well, you know, 7 eighths. It don't matter that much. It's not going to make that much of a difference in the thickness. So I went with the, uh, I just went on and went with the 7 8 So it still comes out to an inch and three quarter. Um, I've almost kind of got this one rounded off and probably be starting on the next one here in a few minutes. Um, on the hooves, um, Like I said in the beginning, you don't have to carve the bottoms of the hooves, of all hooves, unless you want to. But when you cut it out, you're going to have two pieces to practice with. Because when you have, you'll see when you put it together, you'll actually have two extra legs if you want a standing leg. Um, so you'll end up taking two of the legs off because you'll have two pieces by the time you take it apart. Um, those make great practice pieces. So that's what I did earlier to learn how to do the hooves um, so it's got a little horseshoe on there so you can see that it's got a little horseshoe and then he's got the actual part of the foot of the hoof the bottom of it um, and they say this is a heart for a horse that the horse has four hearts and one heart in his feet each foot so that was kind of interesting to learn. Um, but these were real simple. They're just little stop cuts. Um, when you do the bottoms, you're just making a little stop, a little V-cut. And you take that out. And um, then you it's and then this right here is just a, just a V-cut. And you just get it to where it looks kind of like a horse's foot um, 
then there's some little details back here and then there's a um this is his hair on the back um So yeah, it's a good little thing to practice your hoof with, and you got two of them. I got another one here that I didn't even do because I started on uh, I started on the uh, horse horse's hooves after I did one. I was like, well, I think I can do that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start. So I did all four hooves off camera just to speed things up a little bit, and I'll still like I said, I still got some shaping to do. Um. The other the interesting thing that I learned actually from Lynn's video was that um, the horse, all of his weight is on the front leg. They support themselves on the front legs. And you would think it would be the back legs. But most of their weight and body, central mass of their body weight is over the front legs. And also, the uh, hooves on the front legs are bigger than the hooves on the back legs which I thought that was kind of interesting alright so we're just about just about where we want to be on this set of legs and like I said I'm just roughing down to my lines when you cut it out make sure you leave Always leave the lines when you cut a pattern. Always leave a line because uh, that's actually where you'll start rounding. So if you make you make some cut, you make your cuts. Um, always go outside the line that you drawn if you drawn the pattern on. Um, just go outside the lines. Leave yourself about a, about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch on the outside. Sometimes if it's complicated, once I trace the pattern, then I'll go around and put me a cut line on the outside of the actual line of the pattern. Gives me something to follow when I'm cutting it out. Um, so that's just little tricks I do when I'm doing a pattern. Things like chat was getting cut off a little bit. Let's move it over here to this side. But yeah, so um So just round your legs off. Rough them in. Just like with any carving, you always just rough it in. Get things started. And you can see how I carve. I carve on my belly most of the time when I'm carving something big. It's just the way, it's just an easier way to hold it and, um, get it up closer where you can see people like us that make YouTube videos for carving um, it is usually not the way we usually carve normally <laughs> because you have to have the camera in front of you or at a certain spot and you um, and you're basically trying to worry about keeping it in the camera when this is really how I carve a lot of times over here in my chair, sitting over here. Um, so you got to be comfortable when you carve. And, and I'm sure anybody that does carving videos will say the same thing, that most of the carving positions that you're in for a video is not the way you carve, and it's definitely not the most comfortable position to be in. Because you're trying to keep it in front of the camera the whole time. Okay, so we kind of got, I got those two. Probably take a little more off here. Let's 
chipping a little bit, so I got to go the other way. But basically, I'm just using push cuts and, and stop cuts and occasionally some pull cuts when the grain's going the other way. Just taking off the hard edges, getting a little shake to it. Alright, this same thing on the other part. Now, if you notice, I don't have lines on this one, but I pretty much know what I did, and I know how much I kind of took off. And really, um, I'm just taking off all the saw marks and the flat edges. So, you really don't need a line on the other side. But if you wanted to, you could... Uh, Take that pattern and reverse image print it on your computer or you can turn it over upside down so it's kind of mirrored to the other side and then use some copy paper or carbon paper and, and copy the pattern on the other side. So you have it on both sides if you want. But I didn't do that on this because I figured I could pretty much once I did one of the legs, I'd be able to do the rest of the legs and it's a really nice piece of Heineke basswood, so everything's coming off real nice. And like I said, I'm, there's no way I'll be able to carve this whole thing on camera, but I will take you through some of the steps as I get it done and closer to being done. Um, definitely on the details and stuff, but if you've been carving a little bit, you can take that pattern and and get it all roughed out. It's, it's really a fairly easy carve. It's just when you come to the details which is what we'll really focus on once I get it once I get it carved down to all roughed in Just remember if you're doing it in two pieces, whatever you do, don't go up here and carve on the belly or anything yet. Save that. Um, save that till you got it all glued together. And you can kind of look at the pattern and eyeball where the leg stops. Now I cut mine a little short because I figure once I once I get up in here and then I glue it together I'll be able to do some carving and take some more off right there if I have to
if you're new to the channel you know i hope you'll subscribe i'm almost hit my goal i'm at 925 23 subscribers something like that so i've almost hit my goal of a thousand and i appreciate everybody that's been supporting and sending emails and good comments and everything i really appreciate it i didn't even expect to get a thousand subscribers but it's cool because um just so many good people in the carving community and this fun group of people and everybody's positive i think i've only had to delete one bad comment and that was just because somebody was posting links to things that didn't belong in there um And so if you can give me a like, that'd be great too. Likes and comments help out the channel. And YouTube puts us out there a little more when we get likes and when we get comments. Um, and that helps helps us get new viewers, new subscribers. And um, hopefully eventually we can get this channel grow, growth. We have th thousands and thousands of viewers in our community. Time goes fast when you're carving. Seems like we've been on here for 45 minutes and it don't even seem like it. Seems like I've only been on here for about 15, 15, 20 minutes. It's when you're carving away and you look up and you're like, oh man, I didn't know I was carving that long. That's one thing when you're watching a live, you know, there's no editing. There's no editing. You're seeing it live. So if I whack a finger or something, you'll see that too. Hey Tim, glad you're back. Thanks for stopping by. probably take a few minutes before I stop just to ask a couple questions of commenters and viewers just so I know what will help me with the channel and um, feel free to give me any kind of suggestions I can definitely take constructive criticism because really I want to make make this channel some good videos for you. So, you know, if the lighting's bad or can't see an angle, um, I'm always working on the camera angle, trying to get a better view because I know it's hard, like right now, carving up against my body doesn't give you the best camera view but um, it's one of the most comfortable ways to carve and that's how you're probably doing it too you just haven't really paid attention to it Still going to be working on a couple other projects. This ain't the only videos I'm going to do. 
I got a few small ones. Um, I got another cartoon character I was going to do. Um, I did the Tweety. And then I did the Barbecue Pig. So I think I got something in mind you guys will like. That you can whip out at home too. And it will be a fun little, fun little card for you. And um, I'm still trying to get together with Bob. We're going to do... I think we were going to do some shelf elves. Bob's the master of shelf elves. He's got so many different... If you go back and watch my shelf elf video, all those ones in there were Bob's. And he's got so many different styles of shelf elves. And they're fun. They're really kind of fun. And you can carve them quick. You know, so maybe we have Bob come on and uh, do a video with me on those and do a few of them, show us some different ideas that we can do on shelf elves. Those those dudes are those dudes are cool. All right, we just about got the legs kind of roughed in, which is all we're going to do tonight. And like I said, I'll bring you on next video, probably be on Monday again. We'll work on the horse, and you can see the progress I've made because I'll work on him a little bit off camera, getting closer to being done. But if you're working on this horse, Again, go back and watch some of Lynn's videos. Um, put a link in his description to his channel. Subscribe to him. Um, if you like the old Wild West caricatures. And um, make it your own. You don't have to do Lynn's horse. Make it your horse. This is going to, doing it on, on live is going to make me get it done. Because <laughs> I've really been wanting to get it done and just been putting it aside for other projects. So now, now that on Monday night, will give me an excuse to get him done. And closer we get, we'll be able to get into the details of everything. I said I haven't totally figured out what all I'm going to put on him, but I know he's going to have some different stuff than what you've seen on the pictures. We might end up having some skinny legs. By the time I get done. Okay, we just about got the legs all rounded around. 
Almost got all the rough spots off. And like I said, that's all I really kind of planned on doing tonight. Just getting the start on the sheriff's horse. All right, so we'll do a little cleanup off camera. But you can see, you probably can't see as good as I can, but the legs are starting to take some shape. And we'll thin them out a little more. But as you can see, the back legs are starting to come together. And like I said, don't carve too far up because when you cut back here, you're going to want to have a little bit of a, a crevice right here, right where his butt is. But you don't want to come up too far. And the tail's going to hang over the back, so you won't be able to, you won't see too much of that. Um, but you don't want to get carried away when it's in pieces and carve too far up, um, especially right in here. On this inside, you're going to have to carve a little more. Um, even I'm going to have to carve a little more right up in here. To start separating that from the actual body. Um, so yeah. All right, that's where we're going to stop tonight, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you get started on yours. I'd like to see what you got going on. Um, again, send me send me pics. I get pics from people. Got a few pics from the last video that people showed me their carvings, and I thought that was really cool. Um, and my email address is in the description down below. So uh, feel free to send me a pic of your carvings and what you got going on. Um, I like to take a look at other people's carvings as well. So, all right. So that's what we got right now. We got the legs roughed in. Um, and um, we'll glue it together. Probably by the next video, I'll have it glued together. And um, there's um, then we can get started on the body and shaping the head and stuff. This shouldn't take too long. All right, but I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel, and um, hope you guys, if you if you just joined us or you come in late, you know, this will be up in probably an hour or two. You'll be able to go back and watch it. But um, again, I appreciate everybody that's joined the channel and subscribed, and I hope you'll uh, come back on Mondays and check out the videos. We'll do lives um, for a little while and see how it goes on Mondays at 8. And I'm um, not sure if I'll do every Monday yet, but I'm going to try to. Um, but, um, again, thanks for watching, and um, we'll see you on the next one.